nursing care plan, an essential part of nursing school and nursing in general. Professor Rich R in here. I'm gonna show you a nursing care plan, how to develop that for a patient who has a fractured hip. Just saw the video of our patient kind of rathering in bed there obviously looks to be some sort of discomfort and sort of pain so they have that hip fracture have not yet had surgery so let's develop this care plan for our patient um, we're going to be using nursing diagnosis we're going to formulate them using nanda the first one i want to, to talk about is impaired mobility so let's write that out impaired physical mobility related to the hip fracture as evidenced by patient unable to ambulate without pain. So there's right. our nursing diagnosis. Um, let's make a goal for this patient. So of course, for our goals, they have to follow the SMART criteria. S being the specific and measurable, A attainable, R realistic, and the T the timely. So it has to meet all those criteria pieces. So for this patient, um, let's see, we're dealing with improved mobility or um, mobility. So let's see, how about patient will experience improved mobility and independence in activities of daily living by the end of the hospital stay. That's all right, right? But it's not really that specific. So let's, let's come up with another one. How about patient will demonstrate proper techniques for transferring and ambulation by the end of the hospital stay. That's very specific, it's timely, it's measurable, and it meets, it's attainable for this patient. Now let's talk about some interventions we can help this patient. Again, our nursing diagnosis is impaired physical mobility. So one of the interventions, of course, we can do is pain management. So we can administer prescribed analgesiacs as ordered and of course assess pain regularly for this patient. Um, we can teach and encourage uh, non-pharmacological pain management techniques. Um, we can also collaborate with the other healthcare teams to make sure that this is effectively managed for this patient. Let's try to think of another intervention. How about mobility assistance? That's something we can do as a nurse, right? We can perform and assist with passive range of motion exercises on that um, uh, unaffected side. We can collaborate with physical therapy to uh, work on a customized rehabilitation plan. Um, and then we can, of course, educate or instruct our patient on proper body mechanics and techniques for safe movement because they're still going to be up and moving around um, right before surgery and after surgery. Let's see if we can add another one here. Um, how about uh, the use of assistive device? Perfect. Um, provide and educate the patient on the use of assistive devices, which could be a walker, could be a crutch, a cane, which will help with mobility. Um, again, because we're looking at it right now before surgery, but then after surgery as well. So this intervention encapsulates their entire hospital stay. Um, we can also ensure that these devices are properly adjusted for this patient. They're at the height, and we educate them on the use of that as well. And then of course we need to supervise the patient during their initial um, use of these assistive devices to ensure that they are using them properly. Another one we can do is psychosocial support. That's another great intervention. Okay, so we want to assess the patient's emotional well-being and provide emotional support. We can want to encourage family to come and visit them and be involved in the care and the recovery process. We can collaborate with the healthcare team members um, and look for and assess for any signs of anxiety or depression or anything like that related to this specific incident that they're in the hospital for. So those are you know three or four different interventions that we can do for this patient. And then of course, you're gonna evaluate the outcome of your goal. Um, of course, this outcome, um, we're just making the care plan hasn't, hasn't been met yet. So we're gonna say progress for this particular um, one. All right, so let's move on to our another nursing diagnosis. So let's come up with another one again using NANDA. For this one, let's let's do an at-risk one. So think of something that's at risk for this patient. They're lying in bed. They're not ambulating um, much. So what can they be at risk for? Couple things. So you might have said at risk for a DVT, right? Related to um, impaired mobility. That would be correct. Um, for this one though, I want to say at risk for impaired skin integrity related to immobility and decreased uh, mobility secondary to that hip fracture. So they're definitely at risk for developing a pressure injury if we don't take those proper precautions. So let's go with that one, all right? So uh, what kind of goal can we make here? So again, we wanna use that SMART criteria. 
Uh, how about patient will maintain intact skin without signs of breakdown for the duration of the hospital stay? You wrote the goal, so always go back and check in the back of your head, does that meet that SMART criteria? Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. It does, right? It's patient. Is it measurable? We can measure in intact skin, yes. Um, is it attainable? Yeah, they can do that with interventions we're gonna do. Is it realistic? Yeah, they don't have any breakdowns right now, so it's realistic to keep and timely by the end of their hospital stay meets that criteria. Now, what sort of interventions are we gonna do as a nurse to prevent this from happening, okay? The easiest one, of course, is skin assessment. Something we should always be doing, but it's gonna be particularly important for this patient right here. So perform a comprehensive skin assessment on admission and multiple times throughout your shift, paying close attention to those bony prominences and areas under external devices, right? We're gonna document, maybe even photograph any changes or such as redness, warmth, or a breakdown that might be occurring. Um, another intervention, what do we always do? Positioning, repositioning, that's another great intervention, right? So Q2 hour turn, turn and reposition the patient every couple hours to relieve pressure on those vulnerable areas um, is very important. Use pressure relieving devices such as air mattresses, cushions, pillows, which again will induce the risk of pressure injuries for this patient. How about skin care? right? That's, that's important, just skin care in general. Keep the skin clean and dry. Um, pay special attention to the potential for area for skin folds. Contact with assistive devices if they're putting pressure on those. Um, avoid friction and shear when we're moving the patient back and forth up in bed or transferring them. Very important. Um, what else can we do for this patient to in, it, uh, reduce their risk for skin integrity? How about education? It always a huge piece of our job, education. Educate the patient maybe on, and the caregivers on the importance of regular skin checks, not only during the hospital, but at home as well. Provide information on proper nutrients, the addition of extra protein, the importance of hydration to promote good skin healing for that wound that they're eventually going to have after surgery. Um, teach the patient again about how to properly use those assistive devices that we mentioned as another, um, in one of our other goals there. Uh, because that's gonna improper use can lead to skin injuries as well. For our for our outcome on this one again, we're just doing this. So we either are gonna have our our goal being it's either gonna be in it's met, not met, or in progress. This one's still in progress. We're just developing, making our initial care plan for this patient. So it's gonna be in progress. So let's come up with another nursing diagnosis for this patient. Again, we want something that's very relatable to this issue that they're having with that hip fracture. What do we expect them to have? Pain, absolutely. So we need to write a nursing diagnosis for acute pain. All right, so acute pain related to the hip fracture second due to secondary trauma as evidenced by patient reports pain of eight out of 10 on a numerical scale. Okay, so there's our nursing diagnosis. Now let's come up with a goal for this one. We'll report a pain level of less than five out of 10 for my shift, okay? It meets all that criteria. Again, every time you come up with a goal, reevaluate that goal based upon that SMART criteria, as I've said a couple times in this video. Now, what kind of interventions can we do for this? Of course, pain assessment. Right, we can assess the patients using that numerical scale from zero to 10. We can use the, the Wong's faces scale. We can, multiple different scales we can use to assess their pain. Um, ask the patient to describe that pain. Um, using that PQTRS method, um, there's a video that I have, I'll check that out if you're unfamiliar how to do a proper pain assessment, but we use that PQRSTU method, it's very important. Another intervention, of course, medications, pharmacological pain management is gonna be very important for this patient. Administer um, prescribed pain medications for this patient. We wanna monitor for side effects of those pain medications. What are some major side effects of pain medications, specifically opioids? Respiratory depression is the big one, right? It's gonna decrease their, their respiratory rate. It's gonna cause maybe some constipation, some drowsiness. Um, all things, if it's an older patient that we're gonna wanna look out for. So we wanna monitor for those, but also educate the patient on those as well. Um, 
teach the patient non-pharmacological pain management, distraction, watching TV, podcast, um, utilize heat and cold therapy per our orders for physicians to heal with that. Um, how about positioning? Assist the patient into specific positions in which their pain is going to be less. Um, use pillows, positioning devices, etc., to help our patient achieve those goals. Um, another intervention is development of communication, right? We want to establish open communication for our patients to encourage them to express their pain levels and how they're feeling. And then of course, we want to regularly assess their pain levels and adjust our therapies and interventions based upon their responses, which we can't really do unless we have an open communication dialogue from this patient. Okay. So again, you're going to evaluate this, this nursing intervention and the goal that you had. And this one, of course, is going to be in progress, all right? Because um, my shift hasn't concluded. That's a nursing care plan there for a patient with a fractured hip. Hope it helped you a little bit. There's some more videos for you to check out if you need a little bit more help as well. Have a wonderful day.